Uh, today we begin the shortest season of the church's year, uh, which is, of course, Septuagesima season. And today we recognise that we look at uh, this pre-Lent period as a time of preparation to spend a good Lent. So the subject for the sermon today, uh, as we greet all our YouTube viewers and those uh, online, uh, is about the service of God. So in the epistle today on Septuagesima Sunday, we are called to a contest not to receive a perishable crown, but an imperishable one. Now, what St. Paul and our Lord are referring to in the scriptures today, uh, namely the vocation of each one of us by baptism, which of course is to serve God with lasting fervour, labour at the business of our eternal salvation, and the end of days we may not receive the gift of a denarius, but of life everlasting. Now, God calls each of us at diverse times in each person's life, and is always there calling them to do his work. But what exactly is the service of God and why do we need to carry out? It is not just an invitation to work in the vineyard, but we are obliged to do so. When we live in an age, of course, people are more concerned about health and retirement and superannuation. Uh, Very few care about their immortal soul and the service of Almighty God. As we enter the pre-Lent season, Septuagesima season, a time of preparation for Lent and a consideration of what we should be doing for our immortal souls. It is appropriate to reflect upon what we need to do for the service of God and what exactly it consists of. Firstly, it is our most necessary business. Because God is our Lord and Master, every master requires that his servants serve him and justly because he is their master, for if they did not serve him, they would not be his servants. God is our master, not just because from him we receive everything that is good, but our very existence, our life, is due because of him. Non serviam, said the devil, and was thrust into hell. People do this every day, say non serviam, when their actions do not recognise the Lord as their master and what they do is dependent upon him. Now, service of God is our most necessary business because our eternal salvation depends upon it. It is not necessary for us to accumulate great wealth to get to heaven, nor necessarily to have great health or to gain worldly status or respect. The only thing that matters, of course, is how we have served Almighty God. St Gregory the Great, St Teresa were all inflicted with constant bodily afflictions, yet they are in heaven. St Aloysius, St Tarsius, all died very young, but did the will of God and were saved. But if one does not serve him, then that person will be damned as the unprofitable servant in the parable. St. Matthew chapter 25. As St. Jeanine de Chantel said, hell is full of the talented, but heaven is full of the energetic. Now the service of God ultimately is our only business. Our Lord himself emphatically declared this truth. When the devil said, fall down and worship me, he said to him, be gone Satan, for it is written, The Lord thy God thou shalt adore, and him only thou shalt serve. No man can serve two masters. Matthew chapter 4 and chapter 6. Now our reason tells us this. If we had a job and never turned up and never worked, would we expect to get paid? No, of course we would not. Thus the service of God should ultimately be our only business. But then some would say, how could this be? We are not all monks or nuns or priests living in a monastery. And we live in the world and have many things to take care of. Have a shop to run, a business to look after, a factory perhaps. But to anyone the answer is the same. Whether married or single, boss or employee, the service of God is one's only business. And what this means to serve God is to do his holy will in all things. 
perform all things for the greater glory of God, deal with it as one's only business, and to do one's work, endure the hardships of life, and serve God because God wills it. Now, when one eats, sleeps, or drinks, or enjoys a lawful pleasure, it is a service of God. For God made these things necessary for our existence, like eating and drinking and so on. Thus, if we do these simple things in accordance with God's holy law, we do his holy will. Thus, eating in moderation and not committing the sin of gluttony and so on. In every state of life, one may serve God and be stay saved. There is no state or no vacation in life in which there have not been saints. And aside from that, uh, it is our unceasing business, the service of God. It is remember to, important to remember there are no holidays in the service of God. Even as a priest, if I were on holidays, which haven't been for a long time now due to not being able to go anywhere, I would still obviously say a daily mass. Our vocation of each one of us is to serve God all the days of our lives, keep the commandments to the end until our last breath. As our Lord said, St Matthew chapter 10, he that shall persevere to the end shall be saved. The big trap, of course, with all of this is to say that there is plenty of time. If I am young, when I am older, I will serve God. The middle-aged person says, I have a family to raise, a business to build up. I shall worry about my salvation later. The retired person with one foot in the grave says, there is still plenty of time uh, to uh, worry about my salvation. I have another 10 years or more of life left. I shall rest and then worry about salvation later. But then our Lord tells us the parable of the bridegroom and how our Lord will come like a thief in the night. Will our lamps be filled with the oil of good works? What exactly have we done? Of course, the principal trap that the young devil sets for young is idleness. This is a fatal source of all evil. Do not let there be any doubt in anyone's mind that man is born to work and the bird to fly, as we would say. And when he does not do so, he is out of his element and in great danger of offending God. The chief thing, of course, is to take one's burden on one's soldiers. As one presses forward, it shakes down and the load is evenly distributed. As St John Bosco says, first tell the devil to rest and then I will rest too. So the service of God, aside from being our necessary business, our only business, and our unceasing business, uh, is of course our most profitable business. Even in this life, the service of God is the most profitable reward. How happy were our first parents, Adam and Eve, uh, if they had continued serving God. If they had done this, there would be no death, no suffering, no evil, and no pain. In the Old Testament, we read the history of the Israelites. When they served God and did his holy will, they were prosperous and happy. But when they went away from God's holy will, oppression would come. Now it is true, to serve God, one must undergo hard trials, such as the apostles had to do so. But they were happy on that account that we read that the apostles went from the presence of the council where they had been scourged, as we read in Acts chapter 5, rejoicing that they were accounted worthy to suffer reproach for the name of Jesus. And of course, it's our most profitable business in the other world. God has decreed that he will reward all his servants with unbounding rewards. Even a cup of water in the name of the disciple will receive a reward. But what are these rewards? We cannot but imagine what they are. St Paul could not explain it when he wrote to the Corinthians, chapter 2. I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have it entered into the heart of man, what things God has prepared for them that love him. One of the saints uh, got the grace of hearing one note from heaven, and he just heard one note, 
and he went in ecstasy for days on end just for hearing that one note from heaven. And to explain what these things are, not even an angel could do so, because they are supernatural beyond our normal understanding. How, for example, could we explain what an ocean is some, to someone who had left all their life in the middle of a desert? Such an understanding would be on their comprehension. So too it is with heaven. As St Paul said to the Corinthians chapter 4, that which is at present momentary and light of our tribulation worketh for us above measure and above measure exceedingly an eternal weight of glory. So ultimately, the service of God is our most profitable business and this is the reward that God will give if we serve him. But as we know, how many will not serve God will reject his call, say that there is plenty of time and other things to do. But shall I serve God that I may be saved? Saint Ignatius said, Oh, how disdainful is the earth to me when I contemplate heaven. Let us be like Saint Ignatius and contemplate heaven as we labour for eternity. Let us follow the invitation of the Master in this septuagesima season to go into his vineyard and labour diligently to the evening of our life that we may receive the reward of everlasting beatitude in heaven. As St Vincent Pilotti said, remember that the life of Christian is one of action, not of speech and daydream. I intend that every moment of time, past, present and future, be employed by me and all creatures in the best way. And as he concluded, of course, that we work for our salvation, and he reminds us that in heaven shall we rest then. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.